Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to be back with my partner, John Coleman, and our favorite philosopher, Bill Jordan. You guys are so kind with that favorite phil- Again, I'm your only the I'm the only philosopher kind of guy you know, but I appreciate that it's you know I'm your favorite. Bill, you're ruining it. I've worked on this opening like for minutes. Hey, Art, I made a career out of ruining stuff. I made a career out of ruining stuff. Well, well done. Thank you guys. John, hey, get us out of this. <laughs> we haven't even well, started. I, I I'm past the boomer stuff i was thinking about um as we get older particularly in retirement you don't have you know you don't have to get to the office at nine o'clock or whatever it is um we often lack routine now i have a routine which is pretty much going up to the garden to water the damn thing or i don't get any vegetables out of it Mm. um but i have got a lot of freedom in my time uh, other than maybe picking up a grand son at school uh, on a particular day. And I think, I was thinking about routines and how good they can be. Do you, do you, Bill, not. do you have a routine of any kind? Yeah, do, you know, I've, I've asked that out on social media and I've, I've asked people, you know, what what is your routine in the morning? And I never, I don't flesh out that question well enough because typically what I get is from younger people about, well, the alarm goes off and I hit snooze three times and then I get up and then I take a quick shower and I grab a cup of coffee and then I'm off to work. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that, and I'm going to use the anchor analogy uh, for you. Um, If you've ever been offshore fishing or deep sea fishing the captain will take you out to a spot where he knows the fish are. It might be over a wreck or a reef or something like that. And he does what? He drops an anchor, right? To keep yeah. you over where the good stuff is. And I see a morning routine as an anchor to my day. Uh, in that, I typically get up before my wife. The coffee, I've got the timer set. I've joined the 21st century, so i got the timer set. The coffee's ready when I come downstairs. <laughs> um, I don't need an alarm clock for the most part unless there is something going on in the morning, but my body clock wakes me up typically between 6 and 7. So having that cup of coffee, I for whatever reason, and this, this goes back to when my dad lived with us before he passed, and that's been, man, that's been 20 years but we were taking his blood pressure every day and we had that blood pressure cuff here. And part of my routine in the morning is taking my blood pressure. I don't have any blood pressure problem, but I just take it as a, just a, what I do is I'll put on some music on YouTube, 60s, 70s, or like, I love hymns to the silence by Van Morrison. It's just this kind of laid back mellow song, maybe some Dan Fogelberg. I'll slow down my breathing. I haven't had my coffee yet slow down my breathing and try to will my pulse down and I'll take that blood pressure reading and I'll write it down in a little spiral notebook. That's the first thing I do other than let the dogs out and let them in and feed them. But once it's just my time and then I've got, I am now up to, and people think I'm crazy. I'm now up to 11 books that I read from every morning. And they're typically just like a daily devotional kind of one, but there's an assortment of them. So it may take me 20 minutes to do that bit of reading. Um, and I set my anchor in that. And then I get, of course, I get caffeinated along the way. I, I keep a little spiral notebook of uh, of working out. I have push and pull days. So push days, I'll do push-ups and squats and shoulder presses. And pull days, I'll do deadlifts and curls and uh, bent, bent over rows and stuff like that. Um, but mainly just to, to kind of um, get my thinking in order for the day. How am I going to show up today? How do I want to be today? I've got that time, that luxury, like you say, John, to where if you're not you know, often working. Because before, I, still would st- I would still take the time to have breakfast here at home, even when I was doing morning radio. Most guys wouldn't. You'd get up in there, come hook sliding into work right as, the, right as they had to be on the air. I tried to be at the station by an hour and 20 minutes prior to being on the air just to do more to get ready to be on the air. That's just the way I was built. Another routine that my wife and I have is at the end of the day, bedtime, we share what good happened today. 
So you end on a positive, maybe even a kind of a crappy day and a very stressful day, but we, it helps us when we find something good in it along the way. So I think That's routines are, I think routines are good. I think you got to be careful of a rut. Somebody said a rut is like a grave with the ends kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that's a rut. So we can we can break out of that rut too, and you can you can change that routine when you feel like you're getting in that. But I think a routine for for starting your day is an anchor point for starting it in something good. Well, it sounds like you've got a routine at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Yeah, the end the end is pretty quick. It may just be a quick conversation. Uh, yeah. We had a good appointment today. We ran into friends. We had dinner with our with uh, with our daughter and her family. I uh, got an unexpected phone call from a friend, or I called a friend and surprised them mm -hmm. and just check in on them. That was a good day. Had a great interaction with a stranger at the store. Any number of things, but to but to begin and end on a positive thing. Again, kind of start your day with who am I going to be today? How am I going to show up? Um, and then at the end of the day, went went right. You know what I like about that is um, you are in charge. You decide how am I going to be today, as opposed it, to what most people just get up and go through the day and you know, stuff into them and they react to it. Old motivational speaker Jim Rohn famously said, you run the day or the day runs you. Great stuff. You run the day or the day runs you. Yeah. And that's why if typically on Mondays on, on social media – I will some sort of Monday morning kind of a motivational thing. And I used to say, have a great week, my friend. Now I say, make it a great week. There's yeah. a difference. Yeah. There's a difference. So speaking of, yeah, speaking of routines, can, Bill, are speaking you, of routines, Bill, uh, I follow your Facebook page uh, quite regularly. And you must have some kind of routine that um, I don't know how you fit anything else in during the day of getting a whole bunch of stuff about coffee and other philosophical stuff and some pictures here and there. So how much of your day is routinely spent tracking down all the stuff that you put on your, quite frankly, enjoyable uh, well, Facebook page? Well, I think page? Um, this, is, this is a little secret. People send me stuff all the time, memes and stuff like that. But I also have followed some pretty great and inspiring and philosophical stuff online. So I follow a lot of or some really thought leaders and influencers, and I'll lift from them. So I try to start. I try to start my day with something that makes you think, and something that makes you laugh. So I'll make a couple of posts in the morning, but then at about five o'clock in the afternoon, this is a, this is a big secret now. At about five in the afternoon, I'll go to Facebook and I'll click the memories. And if I made a post, somebody will say, "How do you keep up with all these celebrity birthdays?" It's like, well, if Julia Roberts had a birthday last year on this date, I add one and wish her a happy birthday. You know, <laughs> so but if it but if it's a if it's a, a, a meme or something from a year ago or two or three or four or five or more years ago and it's still irrelevant, I just copy and and post it again. I mean, we all need reminders of some of these things. Right. So to make somebody laugh, think or even sometimes cry was something that can be moving you to the point of tears. Uh, that's what I try to do. It does not take as much time as people think for me to I'm not out there searching. I need something. I've got a phone full of photos and memes and and philosophical quotes that I can just pull from. So uh, and again, as we've talked about in a prior one, I'm trying to um, uh, cut down on some of my social media because it it is crazy when you pick it up and you see at the end of the week how much time they say you've spent. But it's become something that we all do sit Go to a doctor's office, go to a line in a grocery store. Everybody's just looking in their phone and it can be addictive. I'm, I'm working on that addiction, but hopefully, um, and I do have some people say you've got too much time on your hands to which I respond. Don't you wish you did? <laughs> <laughs> but routine is good. Routine. I think it is. And there, yeah. and you got to guard against the negative routine. And by that, I mean the negative thinking. And uh, I know a lot of people, it's like, I mean, if you, it's the old saying, too, you know, watch out for these people. They'll find a, a problem for every solution. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I run into them. I know them. You make a suggestion. They ask for a suggestion. You give it to them, and they'll tell you why they can't do it. Mm -hmm. That is routine for them is to come up with the negative. So, you know, to each his own. Well, yeah, this I, is a great I, routine, I routine getting together with you. 
uh, uh, routines are uh, uh, are um, uh, important. They're important to me. Uh, one of my uh, primary routines, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if I have. I get up early in the morning, just naturally, and I ten to three, four days a week go to the gym, and I'm I, I may be home by eight thirty after spending an hour there. So I mean I'm a really early bird. But before I do any of that. Uh, there's a, actually there's a, a, somebody put out a book about it, about why it's important uh, called Make Your Bed. I think it was an Admiral McRaven yep. who yep. Uh, led a SEAL team. And yep. it's, it's a great, you can actually, it was came from a commencement speech to some graduating class. I think of the university he became the, the provost yeah, for. University of for. Texas. Make university your bed. of Texas. Yep. I, I recommend to anybody, just watch it as an inspiration about why he's telling it because you accomplish something in the morning, but it's just something every morning, even yeah. if I was rushed years and years, is make sure, make the bed because that's something you've accomplished. And that's so it. it's things like that, that uh, you get into your life, it doesn't matter whether you have a lot of things to do or little uh, planned for a particular day. Uh, and uh, I admire, uh, you, you've really almost made it like a number 17, uh, which is uh, a b get, really uh, uh, routines that you can anchor yourself in. And uh, it, uh, it it's great every day. Uh, John, uh, what about you? Do you have anything special you do just about every day? Yeah, water the garden. Mm. I don't well, have see, to weed. Really, even, even with your watering of the garden, you know, you and you probably do this, you probably turn it into some sort of meditative Thing. I mean, that's probably a really great thinking time for you, uh, standing out in the garden, watering the garden. It's mindless, is what it is. Right. Well, <laughs> sometimes that's good. We, I, mindless. That's sometimes good. we need mindless. Well, I think about when I talk about my garden, it, it's a hobby. And think about all those people who dedicate hours and hours to a hobby. They, mm. they love it, obviously, but they get engrossed in it. And I think that's good. It's... Uh, it's a kind of concentration, but it's also a kind of mindlessness. It's kind of a routine, you know? And I think it's a double-edged sword for people, the, the way we use our minds. We can be very engrossed. We can be very involved in something, thinking about it. Um, hobbies are a great example. And yet it can be relaxing for us. How can... Sure. I, I knew guys who worked on their cars. Every night after dinner, they'd go out and they'd be you know, sanding or painting or taking a, a, a part, something apart. And it was hard work, and yet it was relaxing. How can that be? Mm -hmm. How can they, routine, a routine like that be relaxing? Because they love it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I do Tai Chi maybe four or five times a week. It just, you sort of get into a, another zone, and uh, you get a lot of good yeah. exercise out of it. But most people say, well, that's just you know, mamby-pamby and you're, you're barely doing anything. But uh, uh, you get in, into a, a, just another place. It's, it's really and I I, Yeah, I think that's partly, partly what routine does for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are able to do things, quote, mindlessly because right. we're so it's so routine, which is a good thing. And sure. yet... And yet you enjoy it, or you probably wouldn't do it, I hope. You're doing something good, you know, a good routine. And yet you you are accomplishing something at the same time, even though it sure. can be mindless and therefore relaxing. So routine is a wonderful thing, I think. Yeah, I, I particularly like, uh, 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 Bill, your routine at the end of the day where uh, you and your wife uh, talk about something good that happened. It could even be you went to the doctor and no, it wasn't that life-threatening thing. It's just the moment. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Exactly. I mean, talk about a good thing for the day. So, uh, and there's, and there's always, always there something. There is always something good in your day. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like we, we probably got another day coming. <laughs> so rest, rest easy tonight because we're probably going to wake up in the morning and, and be able to find something else kind of neat for the next day. Absolutely. All right, Bill, this has been, uh, we've had enough of your routine today. I think. Uh, well, think we'll do it again. Yeah. That'll yes. make it even more of a routine. We'll be back. <laughs> okay. See you guys. Take Thanks. care. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.